Yeah, so I was wondering how much to introduce how I've decided to like approach this invitation because I thought that maybe it would be a bit sterile or something to just explain it away, but nonetheless. Um, so my work uh, is in the exhibition uh, alongside Boycott Women. So I suppose how I decided to approach this event was to think about how, uh, I guess, some of the resonances between the two works, like how some of the themes overlap. I've been doing a lot of research about um, this literary genre called political pornographies. And in the in the particular uh, book that I've been researching, The Horse Rhetoric, there's a lot of references to foregoing gender for work. And I sort of thought about how um, about how boycott women, you know, it sort of problematizes women as a category, right? From what Casper was saying in terms of the growing self and the problems of it and so on and so forth. So um, what I'm gonna read is that for um, for the exhibition here, uh, these costumes are from film, and for film, I read a script. So I'm going to foreground my response to Boycott Women with um, reading out a scene from the script, and then I'm just going just to do it. <laughs> so, right, so this is the fifth scene. The following scene takes place in a large, luxuriously furnished room. Swords are arranged on the walls in circular patterns, like in the guard chamber at Hampton Court Palace. To one side is a bed with golden drapes, and to another is a throne. Despite the rich decorations, the room has a, da a bleak, damp, and eerie atmosphere. Dorothea is seated on the throne. She is wearing a crown and holding a scepter. Actually, for reference, this character, the blue character is Dorothea. Um, she is surrounded by animals, including donkeys, sheep, bulls, foxes, peacocks, gulls, and owls. They are lying obediently at her feet, licking her hands and nuzzling her legs. A small white owl moves and perches on Dorothea's hand. Her fingers are elegantly positioned as she draws the bird to her lap. The owl is completely relaxed, almost limp. She grasps the owl by the breast and lays it across her lap. She stretches out a wing and begins to pluck feathers. A deer slowly moves its head towards her open, inviting hand. She strokes the deer's chin and reaches to a tray of pins. She chooses a pin and sticks it deep into the animal's shoulder, drawing blood. She takes a second pin and pricks its nose. Again, the animal submissively complies, barely reacting as she slowly and deliberately pricks its flesh. Dorothea rises from her throne and approaches a donkey. She raises a fist, which she brings down hard over its snout. She walks serenely amongst the creatures, every few steps punctuated by a vicious kick. In spite of her cruelty, the animals fawn over her, rubbing their slow, heavy bodies against her legs. Finally, she approaches a male peacock. Dorothea bends at the hips, reaches towards its trailing tail, pinches her fingers around the blue eye and pulls. The old fox. Gradually, the animals disperse, wandering into a distanceless mist. Only one animal remains, an old grey fox. The creature is scrawny, frail, grey and mangy. Its tail is cut up to the rump. The wound is old but the fur on his flanks is still matted with mucus and blood. Around the stump is tied a bag of gold coins, so large the animal can barely drag it behind him. Dorothea is laid out on the bed. The fox scrambles towards the bed, dragging his big sack of coins behind him, the sound of his long, uncut claws scraping the stone floor. After his laboured journey across the chamber, he reaches the bed and breathlessly clambers onto the mattress. There, he approaches Dorothea and plants his paws on her chest, eyes wide, saliva falling in strings from his muscle. The bull. A large brown bull enters the chamber. Light refracts off its glossy fur, highlighting the musculature. The air is cold, causing the animal's breath to condense. The bull's breathing speeds up as it begins to buck its head and paw the ground. It makes for the bed with urgency, although not charging. As the bull makes contact with the foot of the bed, 
its four feet raised onto the mattress. The old fox scrambles away, flailing and terrified, his sack of gold holding him back like a ball and chain as he tumbles off the bed. The bull takes Dorothea up in his horns. The chamber dissolves and the bull carries Dorothea into a forest. The forest is dark, cold, populated by tall or stiff ferns like a wood in the north of Scotland or the south of Germany. The bull deposits Dorothea on the dry dirt, her, skirt, her skirts falling up above her waist. The bull begins to pour the ground again and its huge vascular eruption becomes visible as pearls of semen balloon out of the tip. Dorothy has caught sight of the creature's penis, transitioning from bewildered to terrified. As the bull mounts her, she covers her face and screams. Before the bull penetrates Dorothy, she wakes up in her dusty grey home, gasping a short, sharp breath. This is the second piece of writing, which is the direct response to it. <coughs> I can now only desire that you don't fancy yourself for the future anything of a woman save what craft and fraud may seem essential. You must now, at your initiation, abandon all womanish conceits, weakness and pusillanimity that renders many of our sex the object of contempt. To complete the parallel, be sure to believe your person as dead to all laws. Only accept those prescribed by your own interest. Penetrable bodies are working hard. Soft-bodied animals produce no product, take no stock. Tax avoidance, speech and no meaning, free floating, spacey. I work all day, I'm a Protestant. Private fucking property and public fucking people. I'm a very good actor and not a nice girl. I've got no occasion to write without knowing what for, or I have no occasion to say anything if not given the platform. I won't even speak of my own trial, but I'll be the one, only one recorded, the only one called by name. Just whatever you have to say, make it quick. Whack off, wave comes, flip book, flip off. How are you any sort of woman anyway? You haven't got anything nice to say about anyone. Bold letters, all caps, not a word of a lie. Masturbating, <coughs> testing pictures, working very hard, but nothing is made. Only thousands of love hours, bad straight sex and synthetic arousal. Loud dead people in unmarked graves, tuberculosis, cervical cancer, the Crown Plaza Hotel, the Unilever building, the Fleet Thames Confluence. They say you shouldn't speak ill of the dead, speak nothing but well of them. And it's true, the less I see of you, the more I like you. Mercury, Mercury retrograde, rotten cause, vacant expressions, free form lists, free text data, info fiction, info economy, pastors, prayer meetings, feeling economy, straight faces, green grass, the Garden of England, space three, lot 238, block one, section H, case number NC 4951-99. Thank you very much. Thank you to our um, contributors today. And the show is going to be open. We're going to switch it back on, and it's going to be open till 6 p.m. So anyone who wants to stay and hang out. Welcome. Yeah. And I'm going to just give out this feedback form <laughs> for Arts Council. I'll like a result.